All this is Dr. Mobin Say for drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So uh, let's have our quick chit chat. Binary agenda has already started us. So what are your thoughts on the French Valneva Vax? I tried researching a channel but couldn't find a video dedicated to it. I haven't actually, I heard it for the first time from you. Do you think inactivated uh, virus vaccines are more promising? I think so. So uh, there is a inactivated virus vaccine from India, one from China. I actually think that they are much better than spike protein based vaccines. However, these vac vaccines have not yet shown better efficacy compared to spike protein based vaccines. But in theory, they should. <laughs> Sher, how are you? So Sher says back again. I miss these live discussions. Welcome back. DDS, hello. How are you? Texas, hello. Um, Colombian Bean, hello. <laughs> Christy, hello. Algebra Bean, hello. And there are so many folks. So hello to everyone. <laughs> so let's have. So Arun has a question as well. As usual, Arun, you should get an award for the questions. We know that nerve cells do not regenerate. But Schwann cells can. How to stimulate the regeneration of Schwann cells or myelin sheath? Even Schwann cells or the oligodendrocytes, they can regenerate to an extent. You cannot stimulate their regeneration. Nerve cells regenerate as well. Um, if you wanted to um, read this, I believe when I did medicine, we read it. It is called valerian regeneration. So there is a retrograde and anti-grade regeneration of the nerve cells as well. If they are cleanly sliced and they are too, too, they are close to each other and they are given correct nutrition, they can. This is how some of the nerves stop, start working. Or this is how when the organ transplants occur, uh, so not organ, the limb or the hand or, the, or such transplants occur, they can rejoin the nerves and they can start functioning again. Uh, but making a complete new neuron is difficult. To connect it in the right places is difficult as well. Stem cells can actually make new neurons, but then how do you make them connect? It, this is like if I have a lot of wire. If I put that in the house, will it automatically get wired up in the house? That is a problem. Now for the Schwann cells and oligodendrocytes as well, we generally do not have specific mechanism to regenerate them. They would regenerate automatically. But if the damage is again and again and there is a scar tissue form, then their regeneration is not possible. That is actually one of the mechanism of progressive damage in multiple sclerosis. Good question. Um, Louis, Louis Grande says, do complements appear on the oligodendrocyte myelin sheath for a B cell antibody to attack? So complement does not have to appear there. What happens is, so I'm going to give a little idea of pathology in the guise of your question. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is, uh, let's say this is the oligodendrocyte and oligodendrocyte has many, many branches. And let's say this is one of its, uh, one of its branch and that branch is making up one covering on a nerve cell exon so let's say this is the exon and here is the exon neuron now what happens is there are protein pieces in the in this myelin sheath the b cells that arrive in this brain tissue they make antibodies that attack this protein when they attack it and they bind, they cannot really take the myelin sheath with them and go away or they cannot like, if they attack SARS-CoV-2 virus, now there is an antibody antigen complex that can tumble around. Here, this antibody can really not drag the cell with it because the cell is anchored in its place. It is wrapped its tentacles around other axons. So the antibody is just coating it. There is no complement yet. And then macrophages come over and they look at this and they say, oh man, I love to eat an antibody. Right? So that is a discussion we did yesterday as well. Macrophages have FC gamma receptors on them that can bind with the antibody. So now there is a problem. The problem is even macrophage cannot drag this whole thing away because this whole 
uh, structure is actually connected with so many neurons. So macrophage just starts spilling its phagocytic um, acids. It vomits, if you will, its acid on this myelin sheath. The result is that this myelin sheath starts getting damaged. And as it is damaged, normally in the beginning, oligocyte, so this guy, will make more and regenerate this part. But repeated damage, it will not be able to. And finally, either the myelin would disappear from here, creating a plaque, or scars will form, which would also be plaque. So that is exactly what happens. So it's not complement mediated. This is, you can say it's a type 4 allergic reaction, where there is cellular damage because of autoimmune system reacting against myelin sheath. It's a good question. <laughs> I hope this, this diagram makes sense. Um, so DIY Grandma Farmer says, I thank you and appreciate all you do. Are you currently accepting new telehealth patients or consultations? I don't uh, practice in the US. So no, I can uh, offer advice, meaning a more friendly discussions as I do here, but I don't practice in the US. Do you recommend Moderna over Pfizer due to poor efficacy in Israel, UK with Pfizer? So do you recommend Moderna over Pfizer due to poor efficacy in Israel, UK with Pfizer? Anika, uh, I have to actually look at the efficacy. I was seeing that people are saying it is not very effective in UK and Israel, but I have to actually look at that data. The data that I saw in June from uh, Public Health England, that data did not show any issues. The last data that I saw with David for Israel, that also did not show much issues, but this is many months ago. So I would look at the latest data before I can uh, comment here. In general, Moderna is very good as well. But if Pfizer has failed, let's say if it has failed, I don't think it has, then Moderna would fail with it because they both eventually produce spike proteins. So I have to uh, do some more research to understand this. I actually plan to do that today, but I didn't have... Uh, enough data yet so plus there were lots of questions about ms and i thought i'll have this discussion so tomorrow we'll talk about ms as well then we'll look into this data too jean olivera says what are oligoclonal bands why do some ms patients have igg what does that signify signify um, are they present in any other disease? So oligoclonal bands can be present in other disease as well. Oligoclonal bands are usually, so we'll do more deeper dive as we talk about the IgGs being produced tomorrow, but generally they are present in the CSF on the lower end. They are IgGs. Um, they are present in other diseases as well, but they are more typically present in multiple sclerosis. Uh, Michael says, ivermectin being unfortunately old photo, <laughs> 115 kilogram. I was wondering whether there is any maximum to the ivermectin dose for heavier people or can we, will, or we will apply say 0.2 kilogram. So the drugs that have a per kilogram body weight calculation, they normally, it doesn't matter how uh, heavy the person is or light the person is. Usually, you just take their body weight and multiply it. I have always given ivermectin from 0 0.15 to 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 at most. I have never given it at 0 0.4. There are folks who in Mexico say we have given it up to 0 0.6. I have never gone that high. But for your question, when you're calculating it, doesn't matter how big a person is, just take the body weight and then calculate. So K. Jean Santos says, hello, Dr. Moveen. I am an, an avid follower and learning a lot. Thank you. I am post-COVID for the past two months, but
but still have muscle weakness and breathing discomfort. So that is a long haul type situation. I have a baseline condition, which is osteoarthritis of the spine. What can I do for these discomforts? So um, please do me a favor. Look at FLCCC. There is an I recover protocol that I had led. There is a um, very good uh, set of medicines there that you can discuss with your doctor and then use them. In addition to that, and again, I have no commercial interest or financial interests with FLCCC or with the second I was talking about is Incel DX, Dr. Bruce Patterson and Dr. Yo and their teams. They, uh, they have a kit for testing, but that kit has, uh, I think it is not covered with insurance by all insurances. So people have to pay out of pocket and I believe it is $400 or so. I'm not sure exactly how much, but it is a little pricey kit or test. Um, so that is another area that you can use. Once again, I have no commercial or financial interest. I'm not selling their kits here. This is just a, a good solution. So to me, it seems like long haul. Again, I cannot really without labs and everything. So it seems like that. This is an interesting. So Ingrid says, IgM still present after seven months of COVID? IgM still present? IgG count is increasing. Is this typical? Is this after COVID or after vaccine? IgM still present after seven months is kind of atypical. It should go away after acute phase of vaccine or the COVID. So you may need to talk with your doctor to see why IgM is still there. It's not something to worry about, but the question is why is IgM still there for seven months? Would it stay there that way? Is it happening for other pathogens as well? <laughs> this is good. So Sami Samyukta Koditham says, question, hi, sir, hello. Uh, AM says, what do we know about fenofibrate as treatment, 70% decrease of COVID-19 infection? So I'll look into that as well. I'm sure that there is some study there. Arun says, why women are prone to autoimmune disorders? I tried to figure it out as my wife is RA positive, but I didn't get a proper answer. We actually don't know why. There are so many um, theories, for example, hormonal differences, for example, uh, women, their genetic makeup is different from us. They have an extra X chromosome that is active for us that it's not active and so on. So there are, there are differences between the genetic structures and physical structures, the hormonal structures compared to men, there may be a evolutionary need in there as well to protect women more because they're gonna take care of the babies. So maybe their immune systems are more or, or boosted more. So um, maybe it is related to hormones. So there is no good reasoning there are various theories and then there are studies for those theories jim is here today hey jim how are you i hope france is doing okay um haven't seen her augie says any updates on monocyte spike protein depletion or conservation from dr patterson no not yet i haven't had some latest discussion with him. So Gauge says, are kids safe to take vitamin D3 at 1000 to 2000? I use eight to 16 years old. Uh, it really, D3 should be taken with doctor's advice. Plus, 
really the important thing is to know what is the vitamin D's level. So these are not very large numbers. Still, please do talk with the doctor and then uh, use it with doctor's advice. Uh, self-sufficient mama says <laughs> good one my kids start school soon and the delta virus is targeting kids what else can i do for them besides vitamin d and c and zinc quercetin would be a good one as well let them play as well that improves their natural killer cells um, generally kids are less prone to severe form of infection if they have any comorbidities then there should be a thought to figure out according to their age and their risks and that is a discussion to have with the doctor to think about vaccine but if they don't have a comorbidities then mask and social distancing and and supplements and good food and keeping them relaxed and happy which kids have a tendency to stay relaxed and happy as well would help <laughs> M Ball says we need vitamin passport, vitamin D passports. I want to know every everyone's status. That's a good one. Samina says my kids are positive with Delta variant. Um, I hope that they re they're recovering fine. Please take them to the doctor. Make sure that you are taking care of their food. They're relaxed. They are the nutrition is good. Their vitamin D levels are correct. And then uh, with doctor's advice, look at FLCCC site. And there are some medicines that you can use for kids with doctor's advice as well. Kids have been uh, handling this disease better than us adults. Samikta says, some patients are asymptomatic and later they're suffering sudden oxygen saturation drop. Hopefully you're saying it means virus escaping immune system. So um, escaping immune system is a term that somehow has been coined in this, in this uh, discourse and discussions by some doctors. Uh, that is an incorrect way of thinking. Uh, a virus can cause damage to the tissue. And of course, any time virus wins, it has escaped the immune system. And every time immune system wins, it has caught the virus. So most of the time, virus will be caught. In some people, it does trigger the immune system instead of escaping it and causes the immune system to go mad and create a cytokine storm and damage the body. So Samina says, half of his class is positive. We are admitted in a hospital in Australia. Uh, I hope that uh, he is doing well. Is it the child who is in the hospital or uh, the adults, the parents? I wish you all very well. Uh, please look at flccc.net. They have protocols for in-hospital, for outpatient, for ICUs. And these are very useful protocols flccc.net Roman is here today Roman how are you sky frog is here Jody is here Jody is saying don't forget Benadryl for kids yes very important um, So Dhruv says T regulatory cell proliferation in pregnancy equals MS better, maybe, maybe. The problem is that the T regulatory cells are one of the participants in creating intense MS relapses. So Samina, I'm going to share 
the site where all the um, let's see so if you go to flccc three c's dot net this would take you to covid19 critical.com over here there are protocols that are for outpatient and in hospital so please make sure that you see them you talk with your doctor as well and hopefully they would listen the problem is doctors normally do not listen and wishing you well okay lydia says i'm on day six of COVID. is fluvoxamine still helpful it is helpful yes as soon as uh, even in the inpatient and outpatient both it works so yes So $22.22 says, anybody know what the new FLCCC have a recommendation? Let's go check. I heard that they had said it is changed. Important update to fight the Delta variant. Our medical team strengthened the eye mask prevention and early treatment protocol to counter the new variant. See this here. So let's see. Yeah, so if you see here, early outpatient, 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 milligram per kilogram body weight so yes they they bumped it up to 0 0.6 uh, here prevention or prophylaxis so prophylaxis is still 0 0.2 there is post covid exposure 0 0.4 and early outpatient 0 0.4 to 0 0.6 so that is early aggressive treatment they're doing Shane says, you did a chat where you debunk myths about vaccine changing our DNA. I can't find it anywhere. Help me in a heated debate. <laughs> so um, many of these questions have been buried in these long chats and finding them is a problem. I believe JLB had helped to figure out how to get those questions out. This is my way of saying I have no idea which chit chat that discussion was in. Did I, was that, will, will vaccine change our DNA, something like that? Um, let's see. I'm just going to. <laughs> Is this mine? I think this is mine. I'm gonna. Okay, so this is not mine, somebody else's. Um, will vaccine generate spike protein binds to our cells uh, and our nucleus? Maybe this is the one. This is AstraZeneca vaccine and our nucleus. I am sure it has something to do with the. Let's see. So. All this that you use antibodies against in in a bubble to remove the alveolar roadway. We call these roads as microtubules help the cell produce some is those pieces that is so this may be partially what you're looking for i'm not exactly sure and shane if this is something that we need to talk about again then we will do it debate going on huh uh, cj says would blood brain barrier damage include non classical monocytes with s1 crossing and causing inflammation, ivermectin contraindication. So this is a piece that I do not know yet. So there is no T1 or T2 weighted MRI images to say when a person is in long COVID or in COVID, do they have inflammation of the blood-brain barrier? Imagine if the S1 
the way Dr. Bruce Patterson had put it was that neurological symptoms are because the there is inflammation, and I would assume that that is the inflammation of the blood-brain barrier as well, because monocytes usually live at the boundaries of our tissues. So the boundary in the brain is really blood vessel and the brain tissue. So if that boundary has a problem, that that means blood-brain barrier has a problem. If that is the case, then yes, ivermectin can be contraindicated. Having said that, we are seeing that ivermectin is actually helping in these situations. So it may not be either sufficient damage to the blood-brain barrier or any damage at all because ivermectin has not caused any issues. Blaze says Walgreens charging 5 per ivermectin tablet, 350 for 49. Use good RX and go to CVS or other places. You can get number of tablets for $30, $40. Okay, so Flower says twice a week for prophylaxis. Was that twice a week? Yes, so they have bumped it up. I, I missed that part. So 0 0.2 milligram per kilogram twice a week for as long as disease risk is elevated in your community. So yes, you're correct. Uh, for people's reference, if you see here the top prevention protocol, so prophylaxis, ivermectin, 0 0.2 milligram per kilogram body weight, twice a week for as long as disease risk is elevated in our community in your community and then post covid 19 exposure prevention 0.4 milligram per kilogram per dose one dose today repeat after 48 hours so good catch uh, flower <laughs> kevin brazda says Dr. Bean, what is the situation going to be like when vaccines no longer work and people may be hesitant to keep getting boosters feeling it's risky? So let's look at the US numbers for a second because we should look at the numbers to understand Worldometer USA. So <clears throat> we have the cases increasing. Our maximum had been, let's do a seven day average. So these had been 254,000, at least on seven days moving January 12th. And then we are at 122,000, so almost half. And we are going up. I do not know if continue to go up or not, but we are going up. Now the deaths, have not kept up in the same way. And I know that somebody, like yesterday, many people put this comment that, hey, the deaths are 30 days off. Anyways, we'll see. But the number of deaths are not keeping up. For example, if we go here and we say, let's take this slightly elevated time. So that is July 22, 37, 46, July 2022. So we are at about 20 days from there. And we should have a higher number of deaths with that. So similar, for example, here. Then if we go down here, somewhere like this. And we are not seeing two, 3,000 deaths as would be offset by one month for the previous waves. Here we are not seeing that. So this is August 11. So not many deaths, which is a good thing. Um, it's not something to look for. Even one death is a lot of deaths. It devastates the family. So the there is no indication of the vaccine failing. And let's look at um, what I was interested was to see in our states, which states are actually contributing more. So if we go down here. Ideally, what we should do is we should look at state there 
um, vaccination and then their contribution. So California total cases 4 million, that is total, total deaths, total recovered. It will be interesting to see California on daily basis or Florida. Let's see Florida. So Florida, <clears throat> 2.8 million cases, 40,000 deaths. And do we have, how are they looking? So Florida's, for example, latest if we do seven days moving average. So Florida is going up fast. They are 21,000, for example. So <clears throat> almost one fifth. But what I do not know is Florida's population. Alexa, what is the population of Florida? According to the 2020 U.S. Census, the population of Florida is 21.5 million people, which is a 14.6% increase over the 2010 U.S. Census. Okay, so 21 million, and there are 20,000 cases. And we have, let's say, 330 million. What the next thing to be answered is how many people vaccinated versus unvaccinated. I don't see vaccines failing. Let's look at UK as well. And this is something I was actually planning to do. Um, virus, UK. <clears throat> what happened? Let's go here. Let's go to countries. <clears throat> UK. <clears throat> so here is another wave. This wave is going on and this is Delta related in my opinion. Plus UK had opened up on 19th once and now they're I think fully open. So here is the number of cases. Let's look at the this peak. This was June, July 20. So we are almost August. So this is 46,000, almost here, January 2. So almost here. So that means the deaths, if the vaccines have failed, then the number of deaths should appear like these. But you see that the, that is not the case. So there's a decoupling of deaths. And which is a good thing once again. So if you look at UK in January, I wanna I wish that these two charts were more near each other instead of so far away, but <laughs> let's see. January 2 and this area. So let's say January, beginning of January to January 7. These were high days. So let's look at Feb beginning to Feb 7. This is a very rough way of looking at it, but so if you see here, Feb, so 11.50 and 900 and so. So that is a moving average here, 1,000 and so. A similar number here is at 87. And what I do not know is that these 87 folks who died, for example, how many of them were vaccinated versus not vaccinated. The way I continue to hear from Twitters and other places that actually vaccine, uh, vaccinated folks are dying more. I don't see, I don't see overall people vaccinated or unvaccinated. The number is low compared to the cases. So I don't see that, uh, that coupling anymore. And that is the vaccine's efficacy. Let's look at Israel because somebody was saying to me as well that Israel, people were upset that I talked about US yesterday and they said the data was incorrect. So let's look at Israel. So Israel is in another uh, wave. What is their percentage? Um, vaccinated. We'll look into that in a second. Let's do seven days moving average. And let's take about a month ago, let's say July 
so they are increasing now we have to wait a little um, even if I take a higher number in August number of deaths would be a little later so I can't really check um, but here the numbers were increasing here the number is 4000 for example so up till this point 4000 so December 28 and this area near December mid December or late December to mid January and that would have an effect possibly in February time frame so here January somewhere here so I don't see those numbers yet so there is an increase in number of deaths as well but I don't see the numbers go up I think we have to wait a little more for Israel I don't yet see the vaccines to be failing so let's look at your question what is the situation going to be like when vaccine is no longer work and people may be hesitant to keep getting boosters feeling it's risky so what would happen is let's say today everybody decides I'm not going to take the vaccine that means and forget about those who are vaccinated that still for the world the population is still lesser those who said I'm not going to get a vaccine they are going to be the target of the virus as we were all that means the infections would continue and the deaths would continue to occur eventually to a point where the virus would have infected everyone I don't think this virus is going to go away saying I have caused enough damage I should go away so it is going to keep infecting there would be a smaller portion that will be even after not getting a vaccine may be protected because of herd immunity but what you're seeing is that as virus continues to become faster the R naught is increased that is what they were uh, CDC was saying chicken pox so what they were talking about was a faster R naught and because of that herd immunity's need increase as well because herd immunity is R naught minus one divided by R naught so if R0 has increased, then the herd immunity percentage needs to be increased as well. So going back to this one, if nobody else wants the vaccine, the vaccines have failed and nobody wants the boosters, then it would continue to zip through the population. Now let's say the previous vaccine is not useful anymore because the variants have occurred or new strains have come in. Then it would just keep going through these societies. Now that is the worst case. In my opinion, what would happen is as this virus continues to mutate it would continue to adapt and when it will adapt it would keep becoming humanized that means it would keep becoming adopted to us and eventually this SARS-CoV-2 may be living in our throats like other coronaviruses without causing much damage that is where it will end up not more lethal because a more lethal virus cannot survive by itself as well in a bigger set of population all the population would die if the the virus is more lethal because of that uh, virus actually keeps becoming less lethal so we will get out of it um could you please talk about bacteria and role of antibiotics how bacteria develop resistance to antibiotics but viruses don't do similar to say ivermectin so <clears throat> very interesting question and we should look at for example um, streptococcus or staphylococcus and how do they do this bacteria have so let's say there is a bacteria here they have their own little DNA but they can <laughs> so I always crack up that bacteria normally do not have sexual interaction but at one point in their life they can actually connect with each other with tubes that you can kind of say that is a sexual interaction and through those tubes they can give each other copies of plasmids plasmids are pieces of dna that the bacteria have picked up that have given these bacteria superpowers so if this bacteria a 
has gotten a superpower, let's say, to resist penicillin, and I'll explain how it can do that, then it might give a copy of this to this bacteria and exchange the superpower. And now this bacteria becomes resistant to. Now, how can the resistance occur? Resistance can occur man in many ways. For example, a bacteria can do this. It can say, hey, the, the antibiotic, for example, there are some antibiotics that attack the bacterial cell membrane by attaching to it. And what bacteria can do is it can change the, the shape of the area that where the antibiotic is attaching. And now antibiotic cannot attach here anymore and it is sad and it cannot work. That is one way. Another way is that antibiotics, some of the antibiotics enter the bacteria and then cause damage. And bacteria develop pumps. <laughs> That's so funny on, on them. They develop pumps that can actively pick up this drug and throw it out. Just like in our basements, when the water <laughs> starts collecting, we have some pumps that would throw the water out. Same, same thing that bacteria can do it. So my um, I need to do a new on this one. Yeah. So the bacteria can learn to throw the antibiotic out. Then bacteria can learn to evade their enzymes from the antibody as well. And for this, they need complex plasmids. They need complex DNA structures. For a virus to have such a, such a structure, one, the virus need to do something like acquiring a plasmid. Viruses don't acquire plasmids like this, at least not SARS-CoV-2. Then the second possibility is that the virus has its own little genetic material of RNA, let's say, and it has to make changes to this RNA to allow it those tricks that bacteria do. And virus is a tiny thing compared to a bacteria, just like bacteria is tiny compared to us. So now virus, virus's job is to figure out all those things. For example, if it has to evade ivermectin, how many things it has to do? I discussed that yesterday too. Number one, the virus has to do the following. We know that SARS-CoV-2 is interfered with by ivermectin to connect with the ACE2. So virus, virus has to change the spike protein. Enough change that the Ivermectin binding is defeated, but not enough change that its own binding to ACE2 is defeated. For example, Delta Plus has a change on its spike protein that reduces the affinity. And that has made the Delta Plus sort of a sad virus because it is not very efficient. So the virus has to be enough, good enough, sharp enough to find a genetic structure that would allow it to defeat Ivermectin binding, but not defeat ACE2 binding. Then, once the virus is inside, it has to make one more change to its genetic material. So let's say this part of the genetic material makes RDRP enzyme of the virus. It has to, virus has to change this as well, that RDRP does the function, but it cannot allow ivermectin to bind with it. That, that's a tricky thing to do. This is like uh, me coming to you and say, make a spoon that acts like a spoon, but it is still not a spoon. So you, you are given a weird task to create something that may have, let's say, one spoon like tiny things. And so collectively, they are still a spoon, but they are really not a spoon. And so if something is looking for a pattern of a spoon that cannot find it. So virus has to do that. Then it has to do the same for three chymotrypsin-like protease, which is another enzyme. And then it has to do the same that the virus, let's say its cargo binds with the um, important alpha and beta, and it has to change the cargo that it still binds with the alpha and beta, but it disrupts the ivermectin from binding to alpha and beta. So affinity is increased. Then nuclear factor kappa B. So you can imagine, that virus has to do all those changes to it. In that process, the virus would not be the virus anymore. It would, at some point, make a mistake and become useless. That's the problem. Bacteria are more structurally more complex, plus bacteria can actually acquire the resistance from other bacteria. So it is not a single bacteria's job to figure out enough mutation to 
develop resistance. It they can actually exchange or swap or gift the resistance to each other. Viruses don't do that. So there is a lot of lots of homework and hard work for SARS-CoV-2 to do to escape medicines and vaccines and our immune system. Soma says, is there any relationship between COVID effects or vaccine effect according to blood group type? Just a very minor thing that there was a study from China that said people with the O blood group have less tendency for clotting and because of that their severity of the disease may be less. I would be able to um, use the same mechanism for vaccine as well that if a vaccine causes a tendency for clotting, somebody who is blood group O will have less tendency for clotting and they may have less clotting uh, fear. The reason for that is that the blood group O has a natural defect in factor 8, clotting factor 8. And because of that, they have a tendency to clot less. And that works in their favor. But this is not such a huge difference that they, were, they are protected from severe cases. Their severity is less, but they still become severe. Today we have some good questions. Binary says from your video yesterday, the RR ratio of death increased from 0 0.00016 for pre-May data to 0 0.042 in post-May data. So VAX became less effective by a factor of 26. What if this trend continues? So I have to look at that data because what we need to look, here is what's going to happen. <laughs> Just a very simple one. Let's say all of us are not vaccinated. Right, so this is all of us, zero vaccination. So all cases are going to be from this cohort, from this group. Then imagine all of us are vaccinated. Then all the cases are going to be from here and any uh, vaccine escapes or any immune system escapes or any circumvention of the immune system is going to come from this group, all vaccinated. At the moment, we are walking this line to go from here all the way towards there. So as we are doing this travel, more and more people will start coming in from vaccinated as we still have people who are coming in from unvaccinated. Now to look at your question, it's a very simple answer. If vaccine efficacy continues to reduce, then we will have a problem. However, if you see here, even with the yesterday's data, we saw the data to be, um, what was it, 164 million people vaccinated, fully vaccinated, and what was it, 995 deaths, which people sent me comments that, hey, this is not the right number of deaths, and the VAERS has different deaths number, and uh, CDC is hiding the deaths numbers. And so the, what I had done was, and I have shown the, those links, I took the data from Worldometer. Folks had an issue with that as well, saying Worldometer is not correct. So I cannot go and cook the data by myself. Uh, I took the data for the vaccinated who died from CDC because they have that data. Nobody else has it. Why do they have it? CDC is looking at everybody who is, every person who is vaccinated and is hospitalized. CDC monitors them, and if they die, CDC does a, uh, a deeper dive to understand them. Now, are they deliberately monitoring less, which some folks uh, tweeted to me, some respectable folks, and I was actually surprised that they, I don't feel that we are, I don't think, and this is, a, as unscientific message from me as someone who says that they are hiding the data. I don't think that they are hiding the data. They change the definition of what they think is the data. They are saying we are only going to count those who have hospitalized, who's, 
who've been hospitalized or died. Now compare that to 167 million. This group actually is interesting because there are a lot of children here which are generally protected and we should remove them. So let's say we remove 80 million children from it. Then we are left with a smaller number of 167. Then, so how, let's call it 77 million, just for my math. That would mean 90 million left. Out of those 90 million, there is, let's say in the US 35, 36 million that have become infected and recovered. There is a part from here and there is a part from here. Here. So maybe we divide that half and half. So minus, let's say another 15 million from here. So that then leaves us to how much? 80, 75 million. Even this has some youngsters as well. But just like this over here, you take 164 minus 30, uh, let's say another 20 million for this one. Then 16, whatever is left, let's say 144. Then there are some children who are 9% who have been uh, vaccinated, take them out. Then over here, there is a high risk group and that is people with comorbidities in advanced age. And that is a group that is at high risk. So then you compare their situation. And that is what is really the number to look at. I don't think once again that we are reaching a point where vaccines will be less effective. So um, we'll continue to see this. I think we are actually reaching. People are getting vaccinated or not. This group is already in a better situation than us. I'm not worried too much about this group. Similarly, another 15 million out. So really 75 million folks out of 330 million. And I think some over here will become vaccinated. Some will be protected with herd immunity or with masks or with ivermectins or with social distancing. And some will just not care. There are folks who say that there is no SARS-CoV-2. There are folks who say that it is nothing and so on. So they might accidentally become um, exposed and damage themselves and in that process others as well so binary I don't see a dire situation I know that there is a lot of folks who actually want this to be taken as a dire situation and who want us to say you know what vaccines have failed and Maybe they have failed. I haven't seen the data yet. I will do pathology for uh, MS tomorrow. And then I'm, I'm going to, over the weekend, I'm going to research the Israel's and UK's data because people kept saying to me that UK and Israel are actually better examples to see that vaccines have failed. And I still do not see where those examples are. So, <clears throat> William says, you've shown that ivermectin won't block messenger RNA vaccine, but what about inact? Very good question. So, let's look at that too. Unfortunately, these videos were taken down by YouTube. I had done this discussion. So, let's talk about inactive virus. Here is a cell and here is an, an inactive, inactivated virus. So <laughs> it's a dead virus. So it is just like this. And it has little tongue sticking out of it as well. If you see under the electron microscope, you can see the little tiny tongue. So this is a inactivated virus. This virus, like a, let's say adenovirus based vaccine or uh, messenger RNA based vaccine that can enter a cell. This virus cannot enter a cell. And ideally, even the spike protein fusion will not make it get into the cell. And even if it does, so let's say one of the spike proteins get connected to ACE2 and somehow 
the viruses structure is still so intact that TMPRS has to primes it and the virus fuses with the membrane, gets in and then releases the messenger RNA. We know that that messenger RNA is very heavily damaged. That is the purpose of making, that is the way of making it inactive by damaging its nuclear material. So this material is not going to get to work with ribosome successfully because this material would get stuck. This is like you take, you know, the sewing machine, you take a very thick cloth, which has all wrinkles and all mushed up, and you try to put it under a sewing machine and say, please work on it. Our ribosome is like a sewing machine in which you stick the recipe and it you, reads that and it makes proteins. So this is not going to get attached to ribosome. Ribosome cannot even work with small changes in RNA code. So that means this cell is not going to make new viruses. So this is out. Now, how would an inactivated virus vaccine work then? What happens is this virus is eaten up by macrophages. So here is a macrophage that looks at it and says, wow, I don't like this. It looks at it by toll-like receptors and PAMPs and DAMPs are activated. So eventually the macrophage or monocytes, mostly macrophage or dendritic cell will pick up this virus, eat it up and have it in its digestive vacuole or what we say phagosome. Then it would attach a lysosome with it. Lysosome is nothing but the digestive material, correct? These two things will connect with each other, the digestive enzymes will be spilled on the virus which is already inactivated and virus will be further broken down. Those broken down pieces will then be loaded on MSC1 and MSC2 but primarily MSC2. MSC1 is usually the pieces foreign material made inside the cell. MSC2 is usually loaded on foreign material brought in from outside. So this will be primarily MSC2 presentation. So here on MSC2, pieces of the virus will be presented. This is MSC2. Then those pieces will trigger the immune system, right? Now let's look at ivermectin. Can ivermectin disrupt this? Or can an inactivated virus and ivermectin not work correctly? So ivermectin is sitting outside binding with the spike protein. So it might bind with the spike protein. And so this one mechanism might not work, but really the virus is inactivated virus is not really waiting for its spike protein to bind with the cell. So no issues here. Then the phagocyte has eaten up the virus. Ivermectin is sitting there. It's not going to do anything about the phagocytosis. Then it is loaded on MSC2. Ivermectin has no problem with that. Then it is presented to the naive T cells. Ivermectin has no problem with that. So if you see throughout this process, Ivermectin is sitting on a side. It's not doing anything. The only one area where Ivermectin may be working is when this immune system, let's say T helper 2 pathway or T helper 1 pathway is activated and the B cells become plasma cells or T cells become cytotoxic T cells, the the cytokines that are produced and the inflammation that is started, that inflammation would trigger in some of the cells nuclear factor kappa B pathways. And ivermectin can modulate these pathways downwards. So some less inflammation, but immune system activation, antibody generation, cytotoxic T cell formation, memory helper T cells, memory B cell, memory cytotoxic T cell, they all will be formed. So ivermectin is not going to interfere at all with the vaccine, either kind of vaccine. Bob says, my daughter, husband, my daughter's husband and grandson all, your daughter, her husband and grandson all positive in quarantine. 
going through hell. So sorry to hear that. Are they, how many days are they recovering? Um, hopefully they'll be fine. Skyfrog says this. So um, Rima, who is one of the cool beans, who's a, a healthcare professional as well, she has been asking me for this chart as well. So I'm going to be spending some time with her um, to put together vaccine navigation map that I think CDC and FDA and those folks should have produced. So we are going to put that together. Credit to Rima. <laughs> Big Cat says, mad science going on. Yes, we are just sitting here having tea together and discussing. This is our little coffee house. Benjamin Tan says, Dr. Bean, I didn't get to see the YouTube video, but saw your tweet screenshot on yesterday's data presentation comparing cases death seem concerning for vaccinated group. Did I miss something? Uh, comparing cases deaths? I don't know what was the, tell me what is concerning, Benjamin. I actually saw that data to be very, very good. Mr. J says, how can we judge vaccine effectiveness if we don't know if those vaccinated had previous infection? <laughs> yes, that is correct. <laughs> so I hope this was a rhetorical question because ideally our uh, the science <laughs> Fauci and his team should have they should have stalls all over the place in the US their billions of dollars are and hundreds and thousands of people what are they doing they should be stalls and we should be able to go up to the stall and say I want to check for my antibodies or T detect or PCR and they should say let's do that and based on that, then I should be able to say, I look like I'm fine. I don't need a vaccine or I need a vaccine or, or they should have this navigation map to say, well, if you are a woman and if you're under 50 and don't take this messenger RNA or the adenovirus based vaccine, or if you're a boy and the 30, don't take messenger. I mean, they should have had done that. So your question is good. And yeah, the, I think it's a rhetorical question because answer is obvious. We don't know. There is a massive incompetence that we have seen. And so the way I have been operating so far, if you look at it, I started with that paper that somebody had said that if you just sip hot water and have uh, steam, you would not have vi the virus. And somebody forwarded that to me and said, what do you think about this? A friend of mine. And I said, this is totally crap. This is not right. And this would cause people to die. Unfortunate for me that my one of my friend's brother died of the same, due to the same paper because they followed it. And they ended up in ICU. And by that time, it was too late. And they died eventually. That is how I started to say, let's discuss together. I didn't start to say, let me go and explain or, or I know something more than others. But we are, we are lucky that we are at a stage where we have been helping each other. Rima is here. So Rima said, thank you very much for the, yes, a close culture in Novax Delta is spreading fast. So the, um, <laughs> Soma says, Dr. Bean, have you heard of organ damage by COVID? Is it in any particular age and comorbidity and healthy also? So Soma, two answers to this. One, of course, we know that folks who develop cytokine storm and who either become almost uh, close to death or who die, they have lots of organ damage. The people who die are dying because they have uh, organ damage. There are some who come off of ventilators, they come back and sometimes they recover fully and sometimes they don't, depending upon how long they stayed there, how much was the damage. Then it is also possible, this is my conjecture, this part is my opinion, my thought, and I may be totally wrong, 
it is possible that somebody who gets infected does not become severe enough to be in a hospital, but the virus may still cause, for example, let's say pancreatitis, or may still cause damage to the lungs. And that damage or, or pancreatitis is such that the beta cells are not decreased to a quantity that they become diabetic, but they might become diabetic earlier. They saw this with SARS-CoV-1. So to answer your question, is there any silent damage somewhere? Somebody had asked me this yesterday or day before. Usually whatever would happen, there would be some inflammation, but maybe there is some silent damage. <laughs> so Benjamin says vaccinated group 1,577 deaths per 7,525 cases so Benjamin that is the wrong way to look at it because if you look at the definition of the case they changed the definition and they wrote it and I, I showed it they said for us the definition of a case now from May 1st is someone who is infected after fully vaccinating and is in hospital or has died. That is there. So instead of saying cases, what we should talk about is 7,100 something. So they said 75, not 75. So let's say 75 or 7,100. These are hospitalizations. What are the number of cases? That may be a larger number, but they're not counting that number. So some people would say that's bad. They're not counting that. So we don't really know how many people are getting infected. And some would say, yeah, that's fine. It doesn't matter. So everybody would have a different opinion. This is the, not, not cases, this is hospitalizations. So to look at it this way will be to say 164 million people in three months, May to August 2nd, out of them, 7,500 ended up in a hospital, and out of them, another number, 1,500 or 994, whatever that number was, they are the one who died. Compare that to other folks who are not yet vaccinated, and then see their hospitalizations and then see the death rate there. That is how to compare it. Cases are not being compared because there is no definition of the case that aligns with each other. And even in this one, for example, the age stratification or race stratification, comorbidity stratification, all those are missing. This is just some data to say 164 million people, whatever their composition is, are vaccinated. There, out of them, 1,000 people died in three months. 167 million people, which include actually a big chunk of people who are children, they are not vaccinated, and out of them, 32,000 people died. That is the, the issue. Gold Country says, Dr. Bin, I did resend that link to you at support. Please review it. I have found it very disturbing. Okay, so let me actually send a message to my support team to say, please. Okay, so hopefully by tomorrow, I'll see it gold. <clears throat> uh, Bob Bissell says Regeneron is monoclonal. No, Regeneron is polyclonal. And Regeneron is very good. If you can request for Regeneron, if you are in the US, if you can request for it, this is amazing polyclonal antibodies.
journey says what is your current stance on the vaccine for healthy 20 year olds do you think your stance will change anytime soon so um this is a difficult area i always said it that i find it difficult to make a decision in this area i'm not a specialist in that area as well so it's lack of knowledge plus fear of damage because of that i i avoid this part part of the discussion having said that the studies have shown that youngsters can handle the infection very well their death rate is very low and the youngsters with comorbidities have a higher risk of becoming hospitalized or dying but having said that even if it is very low there is a risk there is also a risk with vaccine so that is the risk benefit analysis that one should do with your doctor <laughs> skyfrog says is luffy drugged up yes luffy is actually sleeping in a very cute posture so let me show you so get ready for a weird camera change so let's see see if you can make out his posture So that is Luffy sleeping. He was actually very active today. Um, he just kept running around. He was uh, making all of those noises. But I think the medicine has changed his sleeping time. So he was active during the middle of the day. And now he's sleeping. Um, so Rima is saying does Dr. Corey has COVID? Let me ask him. Okay, I texted it. him, we'll see. I hope he does not. Uh, Rima says he said he wasn't vexed. I think he's correct in saying that. Um, Carol Reed says, is there any reason guafenicin 12-hour release isn't used in protocols with other drugs such as avamectin, ciproheptadine? Don't know. Um, it may be useful. I, I'm not sure. <laughs> Gold Country Russ says, my wife would want some of Luffy's meds. Do you know what meds he's taking? He's taking fluvoxamine. He is on fluvoxamine. <laughs> Texas says Luffy is in Lotus's position. Yes, he is in Barbara's cat's position. Uh, Danielle says, can you get second dose of vaccine if you are actively sick with a cold? Is delaying second shot okay? So, two questions, two answers. I would prefer the dose to be delayed so that vaccine side effect and the, the cold's effects can be separated and taken care of vaccine could cause serious side effects. And if it is given during another disease, and we might just think that this is happening because of that, that disease and miss some serious uh, sign or symptom, that would be a problem. The other part of the answer is that if somebody is in a need to be vaccinated in a certain period of time, then they have a problem to discuss with the doctor to say, I am going through this disease at this time. My company wants the vaccination to be done or I'm gone. So give me a letter that needs to be delayed or something like that. So this would, that is something that will have to be separately looked at. 
it is kind of unfortunate that this is happening. Uh, so Isaac says, what do you think about dendritic cells based vaccine? Some doctors in Indonesia try to develop it to fight COVID. So Isaac, I have no idea exactly what is the mechanism of it. Dendritic cells are, are cells, um, but uh, how would that work? So dendritic cell is like a macrophage. I, I can't understand how the, that mechanism will work. So until I see the mechanism, I can't comment on it. So Rima says, okay, so I haven't heard yet from Dr. Corey. Carlos says, hi, Dr. Bean, are my concerns of clotting stroke occurring after mRNA vaccine unfounded? That's the reason I haven't got the vax, but I seem to remember from Israeli data, stroke rate was very high. We can look at that data again. I have... Uh, my understanding is that with adenovirus-based vaccine under women under 50, this is more common. With the uh, messenger RNA-based vaccines, it is less common. But it would depend upon the age and gender as well. So I'll have to please remind me or tweet at me and I'll look into it. You are very welcome. JG says, S1 subunit seems to be an issue in long-haul COVID. Doesn't that make the J&J vaccine a better option? I thought the protein adjustment in their vaccine meant it could not separate S1 and S2. So the most of the vaccines, I think, other than Pfizer, and I believe Doug was the one who told me that, uh, other than Pfizer, these are locked proteins. So S1 is still there. So if S1 is a problem, it is a problem. So V says, I have MS. Should I avoid getting a COVID vaccine? V, if you are going through an active acute attack, then vaccine can further aggravate it. Ivermectin can be also dangerous in that time. So I would prefer once the attack has subsided is the time to take the vaccine, but talk with your doctor as well. Uh, Chris says, why is Avamectin not recommended if you're already taking a blood thinner? So actually it's not that it is not recommended. Ivermectin can Ivermectin is metabolized by liver. So it can put some load on liver, which would mean liver will become busy with Ivermectin and not take care of the blood thinner medicine to, to uh, degrade that or clear that medicine out. So that means effect of blood thinner will become potentiated. That means the dose of Ivermectin or the blood thinner would need to be calibrated. And that is something a doctor can do. A person at home cannot do it. Bob says, CDC, I believe, is recommending longer time. If they are, that is actually a good thing. We should follow UK. Um, so, Doug, I remember last time you had said as well, so AstraZeneca is not perfusion stabilized, meaning not locked. So, thank you, Doug. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I see your spam, but good. Thank you. Um, Carlos says, I'll tweet at you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. So are we near the end of the discussion for today? Um, the Niru says, is it okay to take zinc and hinko, hinokitol? even before getting infected. 
I know zinc. I do not know hinocutol. I have to look it up. CJ says, if spike in vaccine is produced in pre-fusion state, but is ground up before presenting on a cell surface, what is the reason for pre-fusion state in the first place? The reason for the pre-fusion state is that if the spike protein is coming out of a cell, for example, cell is broken down and the spikes are spilled out. If that is the case, then at least it is locked. And so locking is not there to say it will not hurt a cell or would not connect with its ACE2. Locking is only to say it should stay in that position as long as possible. And so that even if its pieces are taken, they are the locked state pieces instead of open state pieces. What I do not know is that if it is ground up, will it open up? Will the locks break and the conformational change would change? I think it will not, but I do not know that part. Jeffrey says, Ivermectin, a third vaccine for Delta. So I'll tell you my discussion with my wife a few days ago. I said I'm not very comfortable with the boosters. And for her, no more adenovirus-based vaccines. So even if there is a time that booster must be needed because the virus has changed too much, then it should be messenger RNA-based vaccines. So that's the discussion I did inside my home. I still feel that the idea of booster is not the best. <laughs> so I just responded to this. So Rish, uh, Rishik San says, do you recommend booster doses for all? No, I don't believe in it. Boosters for some who may be immunocompromised, who may be older, who may have been um, started on chemotherapies, who may have developed cancers, who may have developed immunosuppressed suppressing diseases, there may be a necessity for boosters there or if the virus has changed drastically. Mr. J says, is Canada not approving ivermectin because our free healthcare would crash? <laughs> you are as asking all the rhetorical questions. I am surprised that Canada did this. I did not expect Canada to do it. I thought Canada was actually handling this even better than US until they dropped the ball on ivermectin. Jim says, thank you for your time. You're my favorite doctor. That's saying a lot because my son is an MD. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. And of course, your son is the best doctor. I am just, you know, pulling things from here and there and just sharing them. So this is our tea and coffee time to share things with each other. Uh, P. Lee J. Is the report claim of discovering the Pfizer spike in open position was rumor or intentional misinformation? I'll have to look at that study once more. Maybe they saw it in that state, but I, I feel that there is a lot of, for example, look, that Japanese studies, I still cannot figure out why there are some folks who continue to use that to propagate a set of rumors. And the study is totally opposite. And if I could go find someone from Japan and have them sit down with me and translate it for me and discuss it with me, they can do it too. Cool. So um, we are almost at time. Soma says, what is your view? Views on mix of adenovirus vector vaccine and inactivated virus vaccine. I think they should work. So there should not be, I believe in mixing the vaccines. The only thing will be the dose, the adjuvants in them, or how the vaccines are made, any philosophical or religious matters. Other than that, it should work. It, this is like getting the infection again.
John says, where are you at with recommending the vaccine given COVID is treatable with ivermectin? So same thing as I have always said, that ivermectin will be a good bridge to reach a vaccine. So ivermectin has its own gap in efficacy as well. Vaccines have their gap in efficacy as well. So I think I was saying this to someone this morning. I've said that on, on air before as well. If the virus is not leaving any stones unturned to kill us, why are we leaving stones unturned to protect us? Vaccine is a protection. Ivermectin is a protection. Vitamin D is a protection. Mask, social dis distancing, caring is a protection. We should do them all as well. Why do we have to be so careless? So I think they both are needed. Cool. So uh, let's uh, stop for today. Thank you very much for, uh, for being here with me. Please like, subscribe, and share. And if you would like to support this work, there are links in the description to support this work as well. So I'm going to beg leave for today. We'll see each other tomorrow. We'll continue with multiple sclerosis and its pathology. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Luffy is awake.